Today I'm going to offer my thoughts or my book review of uh, Jocko by Bill Wolkowski. The full title is Jocko, The Extraordinary and Tragic Life of Jocko Castorius, the World's Greatest Bass Player. Uh, Jocko Castorius, he was born sometime during the 1950s and died in the mid-1980s, I believe. So he was only in his mid-30s, I think, when he died. The basic story about Jocko Pastorius, for those of you who don't know about him, is that basically he uh, his family started out in Pennsylvania, but then they moved down to uh, Florida. And uh, yeah, Jocko kind of absorbed the musical culture there in Florida. And he became interested in Caribbean music, funk music, you know, especially all the music of... Uh, South Florida. I don't think his family moved to South Florida, but uh, he eventually did it on his own. And uh, the basic story about Jaco Pastorius is that he was an ex extremely technically proficient bass guitar player. Uh, I can't remember the name of the band, but uh, he started out kind of with a local funk and R&B troupe. They're based there in Florida. And then from there started just kind of just panning out into the world of jazz fusion, you know, as in terms of what was going on in jazz music at that time in, in American history. So eventually he, he recorded his own uh, debut album, which was just called Jocko Pistorius, I think in 1976. But the interesting thing about Jocko's sound at that point in his career was that he had pioneered the fretless electric bass guitar, which, uh, Years later, one of his students, Michael Manring, he would go on to describe the fretless electric bass guitar as being a beautiful marriage between the upright bass and the bass guitar. And that, that pretty well describes what, uh, what Jaco Pistorius, his teacher, what his mindset was when it came to music, which was that he, he was interested in jazz. He was a jazz fusion musician, which is, means that you're fusing together or combining disparate musical influences into something unique in your own. So then after 76, Jocko eventually joined the jazz fusion supergroup Weather Report, which featured uh, great jazz musicians at that time, like Joe Zawinul, the keyboard player, and uh, Wayne Shorter, the saxophonist. And I believe Jocko played on at least two, three albums by them before his, uh, unfortunately, his uh, his uh, addiction problems to alcohol and cocaine became too much, for, became so much the band pretty much asked him to leave. Then everything was just a downward spiral after that point. Jocko eventually became homeless, eventually became diagnosed with uh, bipolar disorder. And for anyone who knows anything about the, uh, the history of mental health treatment in the United States during the 1980s, uh, it, that was a very uh, unfortunate time to uh, have mental illness as an American, you know, especially for people who are in and out of uh, homelessness like he was and struggling with, uh, with uh, substance abuse. And unfortunately, Jocko eventually was uh, beaten to death by a nightclub bouncer due to him getting into a fight with him or I don't know, I don't, I can't remember exactly what's, what caused the fight, but that's how Jocko ended up dying. He went into a coma several days later in the, in the hospital, and then he just eventually, his heart stopped beating and he died. But in terms of the overall uh, musical legacy that Jocko leaves behind for us, you know, it's pretty amazing. I believe at one point towards the end of the book, in uh, Jocko's self-described dark years, you know, he said talk, he was talking with one of his friends he was staying with at that time, you know, and he... Uh, his friend was trying to encourage him and basically saying, Jocko, you have, if you get yourself back into shape and get yourself healthy, you still have things to offer to the world of music and to the world in general. And then Jocko was like, nah, I think I already did that. And he just kind of self-destructed after that. So, you know, it's a sad tale, but uh, it's a necessary tale, though, unfortunately, because so many musicians struggle not only with... Uh, all the passions and both negative and positive passions that go along with creativity. But unfortunately, a lot of them also struggle with mental health and addiction. And uh, I think that's a very, it's a very, can, can be a positive story in the sense that 
you know, uh, musicians of today and even future musicians can look at Jocko's story or read this book and say, you know what, I shouldn't do those things, or I should try to plan ahead if I do become diagnosed with a mental health uh, disorder or illness. <clears throat> so I think, yeah, in that sense, it can be a very positive story. So, you know, despite all that, though, I'm, belie I'm pretty sure that one of Jocko's uh, uh, longtime friends and collaborators, fellow musician Pat Metheny, he did have some uh, some negative criticism, or he had some criticisms of this book that Bill Mulkowski wrote back in the mid '90s. I can't remember exactly what Metheny had to say about it, but I think he just said it was uh, basically something like there was some factual inaccuracies and it's kind of like a biased biography. But uh, I can't remember the exact quote from Matheny, but for those of you who are interested in criticisms of this book, you should definitely Google that, Matheny, Criticisms of uh, Jocko by Mulkowski. But despite all that, I think, you know, I mean, I haven't looked into the, the criticism that Matheny offered, but I haven't read his words, but I'm sure there are things about Jocko that Pat Matheny knows that I don't, so I, uh, I respect his... Uh, his take on things. So having said all that, you know, I think, like I was saying earlier, the, the legacy of Jocko and how it can help out musicians in the present and the future, but also, it also, uh, you know, it's just very, a very informative book in terms of describing his whole career, who all he collaborated with, all the albums that he made, you know, and, and it's a testament to, uh, the creativity of jazz musicians. And I, I would hope that even people who really aren't necessarily fans of jazz music would read this book, maybe even give some of his songs and albums a listen. So all in all, I give this book eight out of 10 stars.